Alrighty, folks, I want to talk about the 2024 housing market with my good friends, Dion and Matt, and I am going to attempt to be, let's just call it what it is. I'm going to attempt to be a crash bro. Oh no. And, and see, uh, <laughs> see a, if I could do it, which I'm not sure I can, but I, I will try and we'll see what these guys think about 2024. Matt, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. You're not going to be able to do it though, until you put your head up your ass. It's hard to do. It's hard to do. Dion, you're good to go? I'm looking forward to this. I really have no idea where this is going, but let's start here. The thing that I am hearing or feeling about 2024, guys, is obviously we've been wrong about 2021 and two and three, but we are going to be right in 2024. The crash is coming. It will be epic. It will be nationwide because what is going to happen that you guys don't see coming is listings are going to explode. The missing supply is coming. People are going to start listing their homes because rates are falling and you guys are just going to dwarf demand. What do you guys say to that? We'll go to we'll go to Matt first. Uh based on what? Dude, this consumer has all this equity, they've got all this credit card debt, they're going to lose their job. The only thing they have that has any value is their house and they are going to sell it to get liquidity. Based on what? <laughs> they get a three. They get a three. They get a three. So, so if they can do math at all, they should look at what rents are, okay? Because their rent is likely going to be far higher than the mortgage. They, unless they're willing to downsize, and we all know how many people are willing to do that, um, and to go from a house to an apartment. Um, we can look at not only so we've looked at the rate. We've looked at okay. So now I'm living in an apartment and I've sold my house. You are one of very few people that was willing to do that and give up your two and a half, two point seven five, three percent debt. And you also looked at maybe just getting that fourth bedroom house instead of the three bedroom house. Now you want a four bedroom house. Bad news: your payment is going to more than double for two hundred extra square feet. If anything, you're going to tap that equity and you're going to build an addition. If anything, so those are just the simple ones that come to the top of my mind that I know a crash bro would understand. Dion, what say you? Uh, listings are going to explode. People got to sell. People got to raise cash. Liquidity has to go up. A recession, unemployment, all that stuff's coming. So I know it makes a better YouTube video if you make a point, <clears throat> I make a counterpoint, and we have a good argument, right? So I wish that was the case. What I have is a derailing argument. Oh, no. <laughs> so first, I'm going to dispel like, a really cool urban myth amongst my friends. So I'm hoping that none of my friends actually watch this video. Oh, no. But I have a friend who's very successful, retired with rentals. And in around 2019, I was very successful. I had six figures in rental profit. And, and I had a lot of more people looking to me for advice on real estate. And me and my friend made a bet on whether home prices were going to go up or down in a year. And I had saw them track up in 18, track up in 19. This was before the 2020 events that happened. And I thought, well, it makes sense. Interest rates are kind of up. They'll, they'll probably come down a little. I, I made Matt's call. It's going to come down about 10%. That's what he's saying for like the last year. And uh, Mike, you were calling for flat and I was calling for 10% increase. But at the time, I thought it would go down. So we made a bet that all of our group of friends thought these two rich, successful guys made a monumental amount of a bet with money on what the housing thing is. It was 10 bucks. We bet $10. So anybody oh, who big spender. is so disappointed <laughs> now because they thought we literally exchanged fortunes over this. Because we had the debate several times. But here's my answer to the Doomers. In 2018, I purchased rentals. In 2020, I purchased rentals. In 2021, I purchased a rental. 2023, I purchased a rental. The prediction of the housing crash coming, and I can't say this in clearer terms, has zero impact on my investing strategy. So the problem with debating with the Doomer and the crash bros is they want to go, there's going to be a crash, so you should not invest. And I want to go, there's going to be a crash, or there's not a bit going to be a crash, so there's going to be a boom. And it doesn't matter. Mm. Find the cash flowing deal, right? It's going to have a good yield. Don't worry if prices crash, because if they do, if people had to sell and they wanted that liquidity and they become the renters that Matt was talking about, won't pay more in rent, they're going to be paying me or the rent. Like that's the best scenario. If there's no crash, I now have a cash flowing asset that is appreciating and a appreciating market, getting principal pay down and all the tax benefits. So that's the frustrating thing when it comes to the crash bros is I don't have a counterpoint. Mm -hmm. What I have is they are making 
a moo point. It's like a cow's opinion. Uh, Nobody cares. Nobody cares. 